Um, so over to Stuart, uh, Stuart White. Um, Stuart's been, you've seen him several times, but no one's introduced him, so I, I will. Um, he's a director of the Institute of Sustainable Futures, and he's been there for, what, 20 years? Um, and has been a, been a really um, shining a light on, on sustainability um, and uh, been, a, been a great leader and built a, built a fantastic team over at ISF um, who are great friends. We're actually uh, locate, uh, A2SE is located in their offices um, and done an immense amount of good work um, in, uh, in least cost sustainability for government, industry and community clients. Over to you, Stuart. Thanks, John. Thanks for those kind words, and thanks, Simon, for that uh, fantastic sort of context-setting and uh, forward-looking uh, comments. Um, so what I wanted to do today is to follow up on some comments that John made uh, at the plenary on Wednesday, which is uh, uh, to look at a couple of new initiatives that say, where to next uh, with regard to the uh, energy productivity activities and processes that we have in train and have been quite successful? So that's what I want to do, essentially, to uh, um, uh, announce them, to uh, ask you to be involved in them uh, and to, uh, to just highlight some of the features and, and put a little bit more detail on it than John was able to the other day. And in doing so, it's probably just worth taking a step back and looking at what we've achieved. It was April 2014 when we held the Energy Productivity Forum. That was not part of the formal summer study processes, but it was uh, nonetheless where we launched the, uh, the notion of developing the Australian Energy Productivity Roadmap. And we were unashamedly plagiarising uh, the Alliance to Save Energy and their energy productivity uh, processes there, doubling energy productivity by 2030. Uh, but we committed at that time to do the work necessary to make the case, to work out the size of the prize, to say what could be done across a whole range of different sectors. And so there's been an enormous amount of work, less than two years that was, ago, and there's been an enormous amount of work culminating in many of the presentations that we've heard over the last three days. And it involved a huge number of stakeholders across different uh, sectors, uh, hundreds of people in steering groups, uh, working groups and the steering committee to bring together uh, the emerging uh, roadmap, the draft documents, and uh, we're hoping that the entire roadmap will be uh, developed sort of mid-year-ish. Um, but it's also had a major impact on policy. I mean, the National Energy Productivity Plan uh, reflects uh, a lot of that activity. So there's been an enormous amount of engagement with industry which has fed into that process. So there's clearly a demand. Uh, clearly something has changed. I mean, the level of interest that we've had from the media for this event compared to that two years ago has been uh, significant, uh, significantly greater. I think uh, there's been a running sheet of at least uh, 30 or more uh, media events uh, as a result of this. So reflecting uh, a change in thinking, a recognition that this is something that needs to be pay, paid attention to. And there's been lots of comments uh, through the conference about how do we make energy efficiency sexy? How do we uh, get that level of uh, understanding? Uh, and I think we have actually turned a corner in relation to that. So this is part of what has already been achieved. And of course, you are here, at least for the next uh, 45 minutes <laughs> or so, until drinks. Uh, this is the culmination, uh, ultimately, uh, of that process that brings us to today. Uh, and to the, what, from what I've heard, is a, from uh, feedback, is a, is a very successful uh, summer study. A lot of um, people have made comments that it's one of the best uh, so far. So, and we understand, and uh, both Simon and John have just made comments about why this is important. We're building a new energy economy. Lewis Carroll's Red Queen paradox, we have to run faster just to stay still uh, in this particular endeavour. Uh, and we are falling behind as a nation, despite the fact that the economy has doubled since 1992, uh, and yet energy consumption has only gone up by approximately 50%. Most of the remainder of that has not come from coal, it's not come from gas, it's not even come from renewables. It's actually come already from energy productivity in that time. So it's already made such a huge gain, but there is so much more that we could do relative particularly to some of our key uh, trading partners. And so the benefits are fairly obvious and they've been talked about uh, a lot in the last three days, so I certainly won't dwell on those. 
uh, but one of them that has come up time and again is the emergence of this new knowledge economy and the emergence of new and skilled jobs that will flow from that. And that's indeed part of the prize. And in terms of context, if you think about how much has happened even in the last three months to six months, I mean, some of the uh, measures, uh, the initiatives, I mean, if you look at this list, uh, we see Mission Innovation, of course, announced uh, just during the Paris COP21 uh, conference, uh, the um, uh, National Energy Productivity Plan, of course, which there's been much discussion uh, here, uh, and the uh, innovation statement, a billion dollars, so $100 million in mission innovation, uh, the doubling of uh, clean energy research and the commitment by Australia to join uh, that group, and the billion dollars on the table for the uh, National Innovation and Science Agenda. Uh, so you can see a clear theme here, uh, which I think is extremely important, and it's, uh, it's part of what has, has led us to recognise the, the three dimensions that I'm about to talk about. So a, a range of different initiatives, and of course there are many others that are not on this particular diagram. And if we look at uh, around the world, and again, this is not a complete diagram either, but there is something quite significantly missing when you look at the Australian continent, which is that we don't have a location for a dedicated uh, body, uh, a dedicated organisation, a dedicated uh, locus of activity and research around energy productivity, energy efficiency, decentralised energy, the new energy economy. The good work is being done, absolutely, and people in this room reporting on it from CSIRO, from university researchers, from industry, a whole range of other partners, uh, including, of course, A2SE and the work done towards the uh, energy productivity roadmap. But there's something missing there, and there's part of this is, as John mentioned, we've probably lost 10 to 20 billion dollars as a result of not having uh, the awareness, the knowledge, the information and the data uh, to recognise what we could have done differently uh, at various points in history. So what we've been looking at with uh, A2SE and partners is uh, uh, the idea of uh, three dimensions of uh, addressing this problem. Um, and the industry engagement piece is one that, of course, A2SE has been uh, working on with the 2XCP roadmap process and recognising that you need a big church. You need uh, a, a lot of stakeholders uh, and you can't take ownership of this thing. And one of the key success factors of the 2XCP process is uh, that it's got so many different industry groups, uh, so many competing industries in the same tent uh, because they recognise that they're coming in with a, uh, a dip, wearing a different hat, which is that we're trying to work out how to improve energy productivity. It's not about my company or uh, my agency or uh, my particular agenda. And that's been one of the extraordinary success in the fact that uh, it's been able to attract hundreds of stakeholders uh, to put in lots of time uh, in order to generate those roadmaps. So the industry engagement is, is critically important. The other part, which we've called here intelligence, is to say we need to know more about the size of the prize, monitoring it. We don't even know at this point how much energy productivity work, how much energy efficiency, how much demand side uh, activity is being done in Australia and to quantify that. I mean, it's, um, uh, there are some key gaps in what we need to know. Some of them are being addressed, of course, with some recent initiatives, uh, but we still, uh, relative to others overseas, we, we have huge gaps there. So the intelligence part, understanding uh, the, the field. But the third one, uh, which uh, rounds it out, is to say uh, this innovation piece, which is to say, how do we create those new businesses? How do we make sure those ideas are occurring here? There's absolutely no reason why we couldn't start to lead the world in the services, the knowledge, in, case, in some cases even the technology associated with uh, improving energy productivity. So a major export market uh, to the rest of the world. And there's absolutely no reason why we couldn't be leaders in that. Uh, and what it does require is attention being paid. And of course the timing is exquisite uh, in terms of the, the uh, agenda of the Commonwealth and, and indeed state governments. So we're looking at that uh, uh, diagram in a different way, uh, just to a bit more detail, uh, looking at the outcomes from those uh, different streams. The, um, uh, we need to have new jobs and businesses, we're going to lift energy productivity uh, through the industry engagement. They all feed into each other, so we need to 
look not just at starting new businesses but look at the existing uh, businesses as well, which has been our traditional approach. And I should mention there that uh, in this process we've had uh, discussions with Syro, and I know Mark will be on the panel later, and we're really pleased uh, to have had that long association. Uh, but as, as you'll see shortly, we're calling uh, for other partners uh, in this process. So the goals of this, are to, as, as we've heard from a number of speakers, uh, not just reduce cost, increase value of energy services, but all of these other aspects, not the other co-benefits uh, associated with this task, uh, and, and it will incidentally support the goals of the uh, NEP and the uh, innovation science uh, strategy. I should also mention, and uh, Piers will be talking shortly uh, about the energy lab, but uh, we've uh, agreed to collaborate uh, in this process, which you'll hear about shortly, and uh, uh, as part of a physical manifestation, part of the uh, innovation piece is to, for the first time, set up a dedicated uh, clean energy startup and accelerator program uh, in Australia. But I wanted to just get to the point, this is uh, getting quite pointy, <laughs> uh, which is that uh, the government has also announced uh, the, uh, a new CRC round after some review and consideration, uh, cooperative research centres for those who are less familiar with it, uh, except that they have also introduced a new category of uh, a cooperative research centre project, uh, which is uh, smaller, more nimble, uh, uh, less onerous in terms of the application process and time. Uh, and um, this focuses, and it's particularly got a focus on uh, industry engagement uh, and industry-led uh, CRCs have always had that focus, but this is particularly so, uh, and with a focus also on SMEs. And uh, with the objectives, as you see there, applications due quite soon. Uh, it's only been announced relatively recently, so there's quite a small window uh, for response, but uh, the Australian Alliance to Save Energy and the board of A2SE uh, has agreed to lead uh, a bid for this process. Uh, we think it is, the timing is both perfect for what we are wanting to do next. It's only one part of the strategy, I should add. Uh, it's just one component of what we're trying to do uh, in the months and years uh, going forward. But it's, uh, it's an important opportunity that we're wanting to take up and hence the, uh, me uh, announcing it now. I won't go into detail at all because A, this is draft and B, it's too detailed and C, there are drinks shortly. Uh, but I wanted to just show that there is a, a draft list of projects which are subject to change and subject to uh, discussion with potential partners uh, and collaborators. Uh, but just to give a flavour that we're uh, across those, we're wanting to reflect those three dimensions, uh, but also look at uh, both um, uh, existing industry uh, and also new entrants into the market. As you can see, we've separated it uh, into those categories to try and uh, put, a, put a, the whole frame into the picture to, hold, to make sure that we're covering all of the bases uh, of this particular problem. So just to conclude, I wanted to um, uh, basically invite, we'll be uh, obviously using other means than telling the, gr the group of people left here today, but we, we will want to uh, uh, invite uh, collaborators uh, across industry, uh, across government, uh, and across um, uh, the research sector to partner in this, uh, both the Energy Productivity Innovation Collaborative with those three streams, uh, but also to contribute to the CRC uh, proposal itself. So we're welcoming opportunities and uh, contact uh, either of the three of us. Uh, in the first instance to uh, register your interest. Obviously time is of essence uh, for that, so we'd love to hear from you soon, uh, particularly with uh, ideas about how we can uh, take that forward. So with that quite specific but uh, 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 quite um, timely announcement, uh, I'll leave and hand back to John.